What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to solo flawless the new dungeon, Warlord's Ruin. First, I want to say that Bungie knocked it out of the park with this dungeon. The pacing is great, the encounters are perfect for team play because they can be sped up massively and rewarding for solo players because you actually have a lot of agency in your damage setup. So this will not be a heavily edited video. Rather, it will be me giving step-by-step -step instructions on what you can do to give yourself the best chance for a solo flawless. I'm heading to bed as soon as this video is done, and then I'm out of town for the whole weekend. But I was able to test a bunch of different weapons on the bosses, and I think the loadout suggestions I am giving you are some of the best to help you get through the dungeon efficiently and safely. They may not be the absolute highest DPS, but they can comfortably three-phase all the bosses, which is really all you can ask for. Because at the end of the day, you have to be safe too. That is why I recommend things like healing grenades on all three characters, even though Revitalizing Blast would allow you to do a lot more DPS if you had a grenade that did damage. Anyways, that is enough preamble. I hope this video helps you get your solo flawless clear, and if it does, please let me know down in the comments. It always makes my day when I hear that my builds or tips or whatever helped someone accomplish something in Destiny. So without further ado, let's jump into my builds and the dungeon guide. So the first thing I want to talk about is the build and more specifically the artifact mods that you really want to run if you're going for a solo flawless. This is the same across all three characters. So let's go through that quickly. From whence you came, increase ability damage to Taken and Scorn combatants. That's obviously perfect for this dungeon because it's Taken and Scorn. Really effective on a Warlock because I think you should be running a Sunbracers build. On Titan, it's not so great. Um, I'll get into that in a minute. Kindling Trigger, Radiant causes solar weapons to apply Scorch. This is nice because you're pretty much always Radiant and with the hand cannon I'm using you can sometimes one shot the Acolyte eyes around the final boss. Uh, Flint Striker, Rapid Solar Weapon Precision Hits and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows grant Radiant. So that's obviously just a nice way to get Radiant. Uh, Torch, while Radiant deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs. Um, I was using a Chill Clip Riptide on the first boss and it's only a 5% buff so I think you actually lose out on DPS because you should just be going to town with Lament. This is only for team settings. Uh, Wished Into Being is really nice because you run around with your super a lot or at least I do and uh, this will sometimes drop like 3 or 4 orbs at once so it's great for keeping your armor charge stacks up. Revitalizing Blast, causing damage with a solar ability weakens champions and bosses. This is absolutely massive. This is a 15% weaken and it works on solar. And honestly, in the Ghost of the Deep dungeon I did, I gave a variety of loadouts. For this one, you're pretty much stuck with solar. You're gonna hate life in this dungeon if you're not running solar. So this one is extremely good. Solo operative, don't even go for the solo flawless until you have solo operative. It's 15% bonus damage to all, everything, everything you do, weapons, abilities, super. So you're going to add on at least one damage phase on probably all the bosses. So I would wait to have solo operative. And then Argent Ordinance I use for the last boss. And then the rest of the dungeon, I'm running around with Rays of Precision. <clears throat> so this buffs my rocket launcher damage by 15%. And this, uh, while Radiant, Solar Precision Funnel Blows cause combatants to ignite. And uh, that's really nice for ad clear, obviously, and it's really good on the traversal sections. So now that I went through the artifact, again, that's what you want to run on all three characters. I use Burning Maul with a hot swap to Pyrogale Gauntlets for huge damage on the first two bosses. And then on the final boss, make sure you switch to Hammer of Soul and for the Traversal sections, I would also run Hammer of Soul. Towering Barricade, I usually like running Rally. This is really nice. Again, this is a solo flawless run, so you want to be safe. So Towering Barricade can protect you, especially on the final boss when you're up on those pillars. It's really good there. So definitely Towering Barricade if you're on a Titan. And then Healing Grenades. Uh, fusion or anything here would be really nice because Revitalizing Blast would be able to give us a 15% debuff. And some of these, especially the final boss, there's a lot of like little mini damage phases that last for like 10 seconds. So 15% would go a long way. 
but this is a solo flawless. You just don't want to die. So I would recommend healing grenade and I will go over some ways in the final boss to play really safe and smart. Uh, throwing hammer obviously is still excellent. It grants cure. There is a cooldown to it. Um, the muscle memory is going to be there if you main uh, this subclass like I did, but it is really, really good. Um, yeah, it just gets your roaring flame stacks going and uh, keeps you alive because Soul Invictus uh, spawns sunspots and then uh, that gives you restoration as well. And this is when you need healing in a pinch because yeah, you don't want to die. Ember of Torches, uh, this makes us radiant. Uh, you definitely want to run that. Ember of Solace, radiant and restoration effects applied. Uh, do you have increased duration? Definitely run this. It's super important, especially on the last boss. Ember of Combustion, final blows of solar supers, cause targets to ignite and creates a fire sprite. So uh, just it's kind of just whatever, but the ignitions are nice on your super. And then Ember of Empyrean, solar final blows, extend restoration. So this is my loadout for the first boss, but I'm pretty much just hammering everything and using Lament. And then this is my loadout for the second boss. I did a whole bunch of damage testing on that second boss. I used Leviathan's Breath, Sleeper Simulant, uh, Xenophage, Briars. Anyways, um, Sleeper's really nice and so is Leviathan's Breath. It kind of stun locks the boss as it usually does. This is a bit more forgiving, but what I found with this combination is you're actually able to get a second super if you deal a like if you hit a lot of your shots because you're dealing so much damage. So then you can swap to Pyrogales at the end for even more damage. You can get two supers off in one damage phase. So I just found Wither Horde and Zali's Bane really good. This, uh, this roll is crazy. Explosive Payload, one for all. It can actually one tap the uh, Acolyte Eyes if you have Radiant, Triple Solar Surge, and uh, one for all going. Also, on the final boss, this is key, run, take, and spec. Um, I've got it on my rocket, which is what I use for the final boss, because that boss is taken. I tested it, and yeah. So then the final boss, I run Izanagi's Burden, Apex Predator, Zali's Bane. So a fusion rifle is really nice for taking out the blights, but your hammer can also one-shot the blights, so that's great. I tried Vex Mythoclast, I tried Sunshot, um, they're both very, very good. You can use a few different things here. Riptide, like I said, it's really good for taking out the things and applying that torch debuff. And then again, a surrounded briars is really nice, but uh, you do run the risk of having to keep ads up. And then if they're not there, especially the final three boss phases, uh, you're running around and there's no ads near you. So yeah, run it if you want. Xenophage is good. Um, but its ammo economy is not. And to my surprise, Dragon's Breath with Succession was actually roasting. However, I don't have the catalyst, um, but yeah, that's gonna be meta once um, once people start unlocking the catalyst. Because if it uh, changes the auto loading holster by like three seconds, then we're laughing. Because right now it's like eight or nine seconds so you shoot one at the very start of the dps phase and then you just get a little bit of damage at the end because it's a lasting impression rocket but yeah um for armor triple solar surge obviously and then i heard scavengers don't stack but i had double scavenger on so if you see a brick what's really nice about this dungeon is you can um like set up your damage phases it's not like duality where everything's timed and you have to be like really on point. Uh, this one, there's like a lot of downtime and I'll get into that once I start going over the encounters. But yeah, so have a hot swap there and then have a hot swap with reserves for whatever you're running. Like uh, Leviathan's Breath, it doesn't matter because if you have the catalyst, it maxes at 15. But yeah, like Sleeper, it goes from 13 to 16. My rockets would go from seven to nine. Um, it's really good to just have a quick hot swap. And then like I said, Pyrogale hot swap. This is really important, heavy ammo finder. You'll see I take my time in the boss uh, fight because I'm just farming ammo off the, off the enemies, harmonic siphon and hands-on for lots of supers. Solar loader comes in super clutch. Sally's Bane reloads really slow. So does Sunshot. 
pretty much all the things you're using, you should be using a solar primary uh, for extending Ember of Empyrean and your Restoration and Radiant. Heavy handed, impact induction, uh, kind of no brainers. Void resistance, 100% on the boss, my god. Uh, melee resist, I also find nice because there's a million scions like meleeing you. And then I just kind of always default to concussive dampener, but this one is open to whatever you want to run. And then two time dilation mods is really important uh, to get the most out of your weapon surges. And then I have Font of Restoration. I didn't even, uh, like you could run anything here. This is just kind of what I have on by default. So those are my loadouts. Um, I'll now give a couple suggestions for what I would use on the Warlock and Hunter. I ran it in fire teams. Um, I'm going out of town to my girlfriend's Chris staff Christmas party tomorrow. So unfortunately I can't do like a whole bunch of in-depth build testing on the others. But like I said, I've ran these encounters enough on my Titan doing all my theory crafting and weapon testing and stuff. Believe me, you want a solar subclass. Even Devour, I ran Devour Lock with my clan mates. Not as good as having constant restoration, trust me. So now I will dip over to the Hunter build. So the Hunter build is kind of a no-brainer. If you're a fan of my channel, Ophidia Spay that actually just got a buff this season. Um, its knives now deal like double damage at times three or something like that. But like I said, I did run it with my clan mates and it was doing very well. You just run a healing grenade. Uh, so you throw that down and then same thing, Ember of Empyrean extends your restoration and radiant. Uh, Ember of Ashes is nice because two knife tricks will ignite. And then um, as long as you get a kill with that ignition, you'll get your knives back. Uh, this just increases the area of effect of the ignition. This, of course, we want Radiant always. And Ember of Searing, uh, just it's easy to scorch enemies. So then this just gives us more melee just in case uh, we happen to lose our knives because the whole build runs around your knives. And then same type of thing. You got like heavy handed, hands on, heavy ammo finder, of course. Same, uh, same resist mods as before. Yeah, that's pretty much the overview of the build. I will say uh, Star Eater Scales would be really good if you're comfortable with only having one knife charge. Um, it goes crazy. You could run it with Blade Barrage, especially the first boss. You definitely want Blade Barrage. The other two bosses, you might want to go with a Golden Gun. Celestial would also pump on the other two bosses. Throw a knife out to get Radiant and uh, the debuff from Revitalizing Blast. And then, yeah, Celestial... I wish I had time to do it before I have to go out of town this weekend. It'd be really fun. But like I said, safety first and a solo flawless. So this is the build I would go for. The Warlock build is really nice because you can get restoration times two if you run Phoenix Dive with Heat Rises. You consume your grenade, do an incinerator snap. There's lots of just weak little enemies in this dungeon. You got like the little uh, shielded scorn guys and then you've got like all those taken scions and stuff so they'll easily die to an incinerator snap and then you can just lob solar grenades everywhere and it'll like completely clear the battlefield um as well revitalizing blast is going to be giving you that minus uh sorry the 15 percent debuff um we run ember of ashes here so we're applying more scorch so you'll be getting ignitions off on the enemies so like on the first boss right before damage you just uh pop a sun bracers throw them down at his feet and yeah, then go to town with Lament. Uh, obviously, Ember of Torches for the Radiant, Ember of Empyrean to extend it, and Ember of Searing, just uh, because we always want grenade energy, or sorry, melee energy, so that we can proc Sun Bracers. Um, I've got a build guide up on my channel of the whole gameplay loop, but yeah, that is the go-to for Warlock. Or you could run something like Mantle of Battle Harmony, um, it gives you like a stacking bonus to weapon damage, but what you want to do if you are running that is then you don't have to play that whole gameplay loop of Phoenix diving and like consuming your grenade, Phoenix dive, get the resto times two, and then extend it with Empyrean. This one is much more forgiving as you can run healing grenades with touch of flame. So if we look at that, um, 
well, it doesn't say it here, but it gives uh, times two restoration, your healing grenades with touch of flame aspect. So then you can just run around, like I said, use the solar primary the whole time and you'll just have resto times two. They did nerf restoration and I will admit in the final boss, you can feel it a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be Mantle of Battle Harmony. Hell, you could run Ophidian Aspect for the reload speed. The important thing is you have Healing Grenade with Touch of Flame, Ember of Empyrean, and Ember of Torches. Get yourself Radiant, get yourself Resto times two, extend it constantly with Ember of Empyrean. And you'll see how easy that is to do because now we are going to go into the encounters. So the first traversal is very simple, very straightforward. And then we have the first boss right away, which is awesome. I love the pacing of this dungeon. It's the, it's just so nice. Even the traversal doesn't feel long because you're kind of always in corridors. So this fight is very quick and very easy. I'm not really going to be going over the mechanics. Uh, definitely run it with a fire team once or twice before you attempt solo flawless. So you should know that you have to cleanse the little totem, the boss spawns. So here I just get Roaring Flames times going, uh, sorry, Roaring Flames times three and then Radiant and all that stuff. And then he pulls you up into these cages. So the Acolyte's eyes there, they're always on three different levels. There's like a lower, a middle and an upper. So yeah, just look around and do your best to find it. I would recommend a high FOV. And I would also say that M and K players definitely have a bit of an advantage here. So the imminent wish timer there is at two seconds, one second. I don't know if I was able to cleanse. Yeah, I was, I got 17 seconds. So I cleansed two totems there. So you get like 17 seconds. If you don't, you only get like a 10 second damage phase. So really try and get two totems. Even still, uh, my damage wasn't great cause I was like late on my swap, but still that's not bad. Like, uh, you should be able to three phase this fight. It's very, very quick. But one thing I wanted to note is I popped a bower towering barricade uh, before I swapped to my Pyrogale gauntlets. The scorn launcher that he has, that solar shotgun, it will melt you even if you have like resto going. Again, resto was nerfed, 100 resilience, obviously be running that. But uh, even still, uh, he will melt you. So pop a shield in front of him before you do your hot swap to pyrogales so there again so see the quicker you get out of there uh then he spawns in that second totem if you take too long up in that cage then the totem won't spawn so then you only get one and then like i said you have a shorter damage window so here i just get that i don't know if i got that other one because i'm trying to get my roaring flame stacks going not realizing that uh it doesn't even matter but still, uh, we get the Revitalizing Blast. It didn't matter because I didn't have my super up yet. But we get the Revitalizing Blast uh, debuff from our Roaring Flames melee. And then there, uh, we hit with a hammer to proc Radiant and reproc that 15% uh, debuff. So for no super, not a bad damage phase. Again, I am getting the two cleanse though. If you don't get that, you're definitely going to be uh obviously doing less damage because you have less of a damage window so then here we are gonna have a super again and yeah it's just rinse repeat super quick super cool fight uh like i said i love the pacing of this dungeon i think bungie absolutely nailed it with this dungeon uh three boss encounters i don't think has ever been seen before it's usually like two and then like uh, clear enemies type encounter. So yeah, this was really welcome. And uh, the jail thing for your first time through, that was uh, quite the puzzle. So I also like how they brought back the traps, uh, kind of like they had in Grasp of Avarice. Grasp isn't my favorite, but uh, on the first clear or running it with like new people, the traps are just like so much fun. So there, see, again, you pop because he's just going to be shooting with that shotgun. And then I could have popped my super just slightly earlier so that I was ready when he came out of immunity. And then, yeah, we just take him down. So now we'll get into the next traversal section. Oh, sorry. It's the jail. 
So what you do here is you look at this and I have five there and I call that one the slab. So there's a symbol, uh, sorry, there's a tally number on a slab and there's one on the floor. So the slab, the one that had five and that I saw, that means these six uh, wheels have to go clockwise. I'm sure you know that, but yeah, uh, here's how you do it solo flawless or solo, I guess. I really love how they did this because I was super curious how the hell you were gonna do this solo. Uh, because in a fire team, you're all locked in the jail cells. You can't roam around like I am here. But yeah, uh, basically the background footage is just showing where those are. And then you shoot the switch and you'll get out. So then next we go to the maze. You know, back it up just a little. So yeah, you go to this rubble wall. Um, this also run a couple times, or I'm sure by the time this video comes out, even there'll be like maps and stuff. But for me, I just kind of, uh, watched my footage with my, uh, clan mates and then made like a little diagram that I just had by my desk. And yeah, even it was not pretty. But yeah, this is the route you want to take. So there's a pitfall trap there and then there's a jump up and then you come out and then there is a trap. Um, those are spikes that will shoot out those things that I jumped over. So here I am just checking my map. <laughs> Getting a little lost. So yeah, I ran this all day and I did heaps of weapon damage testing. So the Weapon suggestions that I give, I'll give my reasoning for it. There are other good options that could allow for three phases, but I will just uh, talk about that on those boss fights. But yeah, um, I did a ton of testing and then had to just solo flawless the dungeon, obviously, and learn everything. So yeah, I was a little bit tired when I was running the solo flawless. There, uh, those spike traps on the right, you can just walk on by as long as you're hugging the wall on the left and then jump over that one. And then I think this is it for the traps. Once we hit this staircase, you're out of the trap zone, I do believe. So then there's just a couple jump ups. Oh yeah, one more pitfall trap, but I took the other way around or you can jump over it. So these you can duck, you can also slide. I might slide here, I'm not sure. But yeah, it went the wrong way. But yeah, all you gotta do is crouch walk. Those are easy. And then this is the jump up. And then it's just a jump down and then you're gonna be outside. So we'll just fast forward just a little bit. You just jump up there. Basically just follow the path and then you just hang a right. That is a breakaway uh, snow thing. And then there's another one on that cliff up there. So you wanna jump to the left cause that will break away. That thing I just jumped over. And then here you wanna just run by all the ads in my opinion. Uh, I guess if you were on a hunter, you could just go invis past everything here uh, on a warlock. Yeah, just whatever, transverse of steps. Doesn't really matter, just boogie on by and then go up here. I don't even know if you have to kill these things. I just know that Chimera boss sits there until uh, that's dead. Just get my super out. Um, so when running with my clan mates and everything, we always just killed that guy. Whether you have to or not, I am not sure. So this right there below where I jumped in the tube there, is another breakaway thing so always watch out for that don't land there too long you can land there briefly and jump up but don't miss your jump or do what i did and just don't land on it at all and just kind of float in uh strafe jump on a warlock i would recommend uh unless you're really good on burst glide so here we have uh the second boss and i kind of screwed up so here i swapped to my other loadout and I'm making sure I'm on Burning Mall. 
because one time I popped and I wasn't on Burning Mall. But yeah, so the big thing with this is uh, there is a wipe timer. I believe it's the only one. So like I said, Duality had a lot of um, mechanics that were unforgiving. And that's why Duality is probably my least so uh, favorite solo flawless. Because I never, I'm not good with directions in video games. Like I just can never remember where the hell I'm supposed to go. So Duality was tough. I always had to have a map up so I could double check that yes, this was dogs, yes, this was cup. But this one, it does have a 10 second uh, wipe timer. So what I do is right off the rip, I just take out uh, all the eyes. And once all the eyes are down, that will spawn this guy. Unfortunately, I kill him. You want to wait until, see he's in my sunspot. That's why I'm shaking my screen. So what should happen is he'll spawn two totems and then uh, then you only have to go through like the shooting eye phase twice instead of three times as I'll have to here. And then along the side, I have that biting cold buff, uh, debuff and uh, all those torches are what take that off. So yeah, you can just run. So here I'm just gonna get radiant going. So like any dungeon, there's a real rhythm to them even though I screwed up uh, killing that uh, scorn guy too soon. But yeah, basically what you what I'm doing there is I'm getting my radiant and restoration going, like how I shot that scorn because of Ember of Empyrean. And then uh, that will keep me alive the whole time I run uh, that flame to the torch. So then again here, because I've got explosive payload, I can be two tapping them and the close ones when I have one for all and Radiant and Solar Surge going, I'm actually able to one tap those. There's a Scorn on the other side, as you're probably aware of. So in a team, uh, you can get them to spawn uh, four, like two totems each side. So you can get to damage so much quicker. Again, this dungeon is so well designed because it's a very challenging solo flawless, but it's super quick like day one, my clan mates and I, and we were like still exploring and stuff and we're doing 40 minute clears and not optimized. Like we were running void, running arc, doing all this stuff. It's just, yeah, goes to the deep. It's very hard to speed up because the traversal is just so long and you're in the water. So it's super slow. Like it's very difficult to speed up. So like I said, I love what they did with this dungeon. Um, it's great to run in a fire team and honestly a very challenging solo. I actually, I never did wipe on the boss. Um, I wiped here because of the biting cold debuff. I just wasn't paying attention. Like I said, kind of tired after a long day, but um, yeah, once you get the rhythm of these encounters down, it's pretty simple. So again, you just shoot the eyes, rinse, repeat, um, what I was doing in some of my testing was I was actually killing too many ads, which is bad during damage, as you'll see. So there is what you want to do. You take him out and just as he spawns that totem and then they're on top of each other and then you can stand in one spot to claim both and then you'll get the two torches. So that is how it's supposed to be done. So I showed what not to do. Don't kill too early. And I showed what to do. So we claim them, get rid of our biting cold debuff. It comes off really fast, which is nice, but always be wary of it. Like always be aware that it's there. And then we'll see if I do, yeah. So here I'm just kind of cleaning up the ads because I know I'm gonna have a damage phase coming up. And then what I do here is I take out the eyes on my side. This is crucial to do uh, because they actually hurt and you don't want them shooting at you when you're running out to light your torch. So that's why I was uh, doing that. Then I actually pre-swap to my pyro gales. This is a good idea to do. So like I said, there's a lot of setup and you have a lot of agency in this dungeon. It's fantastic. So then jump up. I swapped one too early. I could have dunked this one and then swapped, but with roaring going, a lot of these ads aren't very, uh, tanky so I can still just punch him to death if I have to so here I'm just cleaning up these uh, scorn crossbow guys and then I'm gonna pick up my final charge and then 
I don't get a great damage phase. I think I put a three phase on YouTube where uh, I actually do get a nice damage phase, but this one wasn't great. And one thing I think I screw up later in this fight is I didn't have my linear fusion rifle loaded. I am horrible for loading my weapons, always have been. Uh, so that's just something you want to be aware of. Now I swap back to synthos because I actually have solar loader on there and look, so right there, I don't know why I did that. I meant to melee, not shoot, but, um, you have biting cold times five is when I stepped in the torch. So again, you have a lot of control in this damage phase. You can, uh, take your time, like stack up roaring flames, take out ads, make sure you have resto going, make sure you have radiant going all that stuff. Uh, and then step in the thing. So there I'm at time six, step in, do my bait and switch proc. Again, sleeper is quite nice, but I was really running into ammo uh, problems when I was doing all my testing, like with Xenophage. Uh, yeah, I did a ton of testing, ton of different weapons, and I was just really having ammo issues. That's why I swapped to Wither Horde Cataclysmic because fourth time's a charm. Uh, I'm not hitting my shots here, but it will uh, allow me to see so there I get my super, um, but I screwed up. I panicked. I should have, uh, thrown my barricade down, done the quick hot swap. I would have done more damage, but even still we get some good damage. We're at the R in grief. So easy three phase. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you do this fight. Again, there's a scorn on the other side. You can take him out if you prefer. I just like doing this side. So here I am. I'm swapping to my scav mods and then I've got heavy ammo finder on the whole run is up on YouTube if you want to see like the whole fight, but I'm going to cut it there because I think I did a pretty good job showing uh, like how to manage this boss fight all the way up to damage. And then afterwards there I am taking the things out and now it's just rinse repeat again. Don't kill that guy too soon. And now we're going to go to the next traversal. So once you leave that boss fight, you're gonna follow the path until you get to those chests. That's another thing, do not open any chests on your solo flawless run. I know that the non-bait chest doesn't glow where the other ones are glowing, but still, don't risk it. Don't even grab a single chest. Also, the secret chests, if it's a repeat character for the week, they don't even give you anything anyways. So just completely stay away from the chests. Work your way up here. Um, like I said, I hadn't got to the boss yet, so I think there's one of those uh, little like loot goblin guys. So if you can have your super here, that's lovely. I didn't. Uh, but another thing, I swapped to Hammer of Soul after. Definitely make sure you do that uh, because it comes in handy at a couple of these ad sections. So just sit back, take your time. You can see Rays of Precision. I was waiting. I got Radiant and then I was trying to hit my crits. And then that makes uh, an ignition. So really good for ad clear. So again, uh, don't don't even get tempted by that guy. I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I don't need his little whatever things he drops. So you go that way. Again, I'm sure you know all this. Uh, would have ran the dungeon a few times if you're attempting solo flawless. And then we get to this rock section. So here... I would have something long range and void and then a sniper rifle. If you look, I had swapped to a sniper rifle after the boss fight and to a sword after the boss fight. Cause I like swords for traversal just in case like something weird happens. You do have a bit of a getaway, get out of jail free card with it. So yeah, just sit back and take your time and take out the ads. That is my advice here. Don't rush this. Um, I hadn't been here in a little while. Cause like I said, I, uh, did a ton of testing on the boss. And then when I was going for my solo flawless, I had never got to the boss. So yeah, I wasn't exactly sure where all those raiders and stuff were, but yeah, I'm just taking my time. Uh, there's also bait rocks, just like how there's those snow covered cliffs that will fall off. Uh, some of these rocks are bait. So just be careful. Um, I don't think I jump on any of them here. But yeah, so I jump on this, it's not bait, wait for the rocks. That one that I cleared that was to my right, that big one, that is a bait rock and I died there. So yeah, just watch out for that. So then here is where the sniper's coming in really handy. There's three of those guys. 
And then I have a bottom dollar with explosive payload. Didn't remember about that guy. But yeah, this will break the wizard shield. Take him out. And then, yeah, just keep moving slowly and cautiously. So like I said, I did a bunch of boss testing. If you have a god roll succession with reconstruction Vorpal, um, it pairs great with Dragon's Breath. And like I said, if you have the catalyst, it's going to do massive damage. Um, I really wanted to use that to showcase it, but I just didn't have time. I'm at like 74 out of 200, so I couldn't go get the catalyst because I wanted to get my solo flawless done and I wanted to get this video out to help you guys. Because like I said, I did a whole bunch of different boss rotations and the loadouts that I'm using definitely have their pros which I will get into once we get to the boss here and show it off. So there you just jump up to the right and here is why you want Hammer of Soul. So I missed my hammer, tracking buff my ass. <laughs> and uh, take out the knights first because they'll slow you so they're quite annoying. And then the phalanxes and then more phalanxes will spawn. And yeah, if you play it right like I did, you can take everything out. On a hunter, a uh, blade barrage would be nice. Oh, that was another thing I want to say. The Hunter, um, Arc Assassin's Cowl could be really good for survivability, but you're going to hurt massively on damage. The reason you want Solar is because Radiant is a 25% damage boost and Revitalizing Blast is 15% and Restoration is pretty much mandatory in this dungeon. Uh, Strand Titan can go really hard. Here, I almost lose it. <laughs> Don't go this way. Jump to the right. I you have to go up that cliff, but not yet. You got to jump from this side. So right there was a prime reason why I like running a sword on jumping puzzles. That could have been so bad. So again, just go slow and steady here. But yeah, uh, arc, it's doable. If you want to do a three hour uh, solo flawless dungeon, by all means. Um, but yeah, on the first boss, arc could definitely work. You could run... Uh, Liar's Handshake, and I think it would go really hard, like Tractor Cannon, one-two punch, Liar's Handshake, that would be really good. Strand Titan with the whole one-two punch thing, that would be really good. But again, if you're getting solo three phases, which I did in my clear, then you don't really have to change anything, just stick with what's working. Um, I was 1821 when I started this, I think I hit 1822. But yeah, so I'm not doing max damage at boss, um, so maybe later in the season, people will find strats and optimize. I did try Parasite as well on the final boss because, like I said, you only have like 10 second damage windows. I also tried Grand Overture. Um, oh yeah, and I swapped to a fusion rifle here uh, for those phalanxes specifically because they'll boop you to your death. So here, it's really nice to have a super. So I'm going to try to get a bunch of melee kills for hands-on and to make orbs and I do get a super by the end of this section. So that's why I'm like so aggressive with my melee. But yeah, so Parasite would be super good if the whole boss fight uh, was how the first three phases are, but the last one, there's no ads for the final three plates. So then you're doing like pretty piss poor damage. But the first couple, it was really, really good. Um, like I said, Dragon's Breath Succession would probably be my go-to if you have the Catalyst. Um, if you have the God Roll Apex Predator and Izanagi's Burden, that's what I used. It worked wonderful. Um, Chill Clip Riptide with a Sleeper Simulant. You can proc Torch, but Torch doesn't last very long. And like I said, I think you just net less damage in the end anyways, or definitely less DPS if you're worrying about proc and torch so i just wouldn't worry about it that much because the damage windows are pretty tight especially for uh solo i believe the timers are like seven seconds if you only get one torch and then uh we'll see here because i pretty much always get two how long that is and then it's like 15 or 17 seconds if you're getting like three in a fire team and stuff oh i also tried whisper the worm in a fire team um it would be really good in a fire team because your uh, your teammates could take out the ads, but 
as a solo, it's not nice because you have to be ADS the whole time. And that is the biggest reason why I love this is an Augie loadout because it's like one and done quick. Um, also at the start here, I didn't swap to Argent Ordinance, but make sure you do that because uh, it's a 15% damage boost on top of everything else. That's one reason uh, Dragon's Breath goes so hard. So what you wanna do here is take out those ads like I did. And then once the Blight Eyes spawn in, take them out and leave one up. So when I was talking about agency, uh, this is what I mean. Because you can literally just sit here and farm these Scions to your heart's content, get all the heavy ammo you need, and then nothing but the Scions will spawn once you get those wizards down. And that's another thing. Just do do blight management here. So I'm running around and I can just like melee them down. And the hammer works as you can see. So yeah, um, I'm trying to get lots of weapon kills so that I can maybe spawn a heavy brick. And then yeah, just keep taking out the blights, take out the blight eyes and always get down to one like I have here and then take stock of where you're at. So I knew pretty much all my blights were down, or at least I thought they were. Uh, so I kind of screwed up there. So it gets a little hairy, I throw a healing grenade, but yeah. So that was kind of bad on my part. I wasn't in the rhythm. Uh, but there's where Izanagi's so nice. This guy will spawn that, and then you can just one-shot him. It's wonderful. So then uh, we melee that guy, and then the imminent wish is at like 12 seconds. So we had got two totems. We could have even gotten three there. And at five seconds, you see he died. So just avoid him until five seconds. Now I proc radiant. What I should have done is also shot him. So I could have, uh, but yeah, I do a shot and then I make sure I get a melee on those ads because I don't want them um, like overtaking me they they multiply really quickly as you can see there thank god i hit that crit because that made me realize really early on that rays of precision was on but yeah so ideally what the damage phase would have looked like is i would have shot that scorn guy before he despawned i would have shot him once with zali's bane and then once the boss damage phase starts i can just izanagi and then that's going to proc my bait and switch fire off two rockets or I guess shoot my Izanagi. I reloaded, but I shouldn't have. Um, and then melee the adds and then shoot off two rockets. Or you could shoot one rocket, melee the adds, because then hopefully reconstruction would maybe proc again. It's like uh, reconstruction's great, obviously, but it doesn't load as fast as auto loading holster. So here, um, this is one thing I absolutely love about this solo flawless. You can see I'm using the hell out of my hand cannon and hand cannons feel great since they're buff. Um, Destiny lately has been so ability spam heavy that I don't know the last time I used my gun this much and it felt so freaking good to do that. And the reason I'm doing that is because you need weapon kills for your heavy ammo finder to work. And then, like I said, I've got scavs on my boots. So even a heavy, that was another reason. I was running into ammo issues, like I said, but rockets, they don't have a ton of ammo, but they do like get a large amount of ammo back from bricks. Like when you look at it percentage wise, like if I can hold seven with a scav, a finder brick, I'm getting two with a, a regular brick, I'm getting three. So that's like almost 50% and like 33% for like that's great ammo return. So that's why I gravitated to this loadout. And then again, you can see the Izanagi, it spawns the totems right on top of each other. That guy is on me. So here, what kind of sucks is I actually kind of ran out of Scions. So I'm not able to keep my Radiant going there because I didn't have any to shoot with my solar weapon, but we still get both things. And then here I need to be and do I shoot him? Yeah, I just shoot him in time. Izzy, rocket, rocket, missed. That could have been bad. And then do I get the other rocket? Yeah. So that's kind of what it should look like. It was a little ugly because I missed my hammer, but that is essentially the damage phase that you want. And then again, if I were to have left up some scions, I could have just sat here 
and just collected ammo over and over. And what's cool is this whole boss fight is a big circle. So you go back to those same places. So the ammo is there when you come back. So you can kind of like pre-drop ammo at each location. So it's there for you on your next rotation. And uh, also a couple times, again, because you have so much agency and so much downtime, if you actually think about what you're doing and how the boss encounter works. Um, so again, take out those guys. Because you have that downtime, you can swap to a uh, reserve chess piece. And at the end, I have like nine going into like my third phase, I think it is. So that's really nice having nine rockets. So yeah, uh, have those hot swaps ready. Um, it's very valuable, but yeah, now I'm doing the blight management, a few more scions, I'm trying to make a sunspot so that they just burn and die in it. But yeah, they spawn like crazy. Now I'm pretty much happy with that. So we're going to spawn in the guys. And you can also kind of sit back, uh, like you could see at the start there. Take those wizards out with your hand cannon. Uh, when I was doing my rotations of all the weapon testing, I was trying to like hammer them down. And I don't know how that guy didn't die. But they're, uh, they're really weird, like they're really floaty. And you can miss your hammer easy. And with the hammer nerf, um, yeah, you can just get into a world of hurt. So I would say just primary them down. The hand cannon, like I said, it feels awesome. So here, trying to clean everything up before damage starts. So I'm a little late on this one, but it happens. I don't know, yeah. So, um, like I said, I was playing for safety. Uh, this is my first time at the boss on a solo flawless attempt. So I was like, just taking it easy here. Crucial. Get up here with 10 seconds of radiant. Uh, that's why I kind of ripped up there. So what you can do is Ember of Empyrean. Shoot those guys. Make sure you're doing that. That is absolutely crucial to do. And restoration. Like your damage doesn't matter that much. Keep Radiant because that's 25% more damage that you'll get on all these plates because you do not want to throw your hammer because you're going to need it after this. So that's why right away I'm shooting those guys. There, 11 seconds. Now I'll start damage. Bait and switch. You can see I lost my Resto, which is not ideal. Ideally, you're going to have Restoration and Radiant going this whole time. But this is where... This is why I have the towering barricade. I can set it up right where I'm standing. There, I just lose radiant. And what I should be doing here is popping a super. I messed up, I kind of forgot. But to get to like the D in blighted, actually pass that, like that's a pretty good damage phase. A uh, little low on rockets though. Like I said, I should have, should have popped a super there, but that's fine. So now we're just going to skip ahead to the very end uh, so I can show you final stand. So here you can see I didn't have my radiant, but it didn't really matter because like I said, I was really smart with ammo, like really farming my bricks. So I had five there as you can see. So now. We're just going to get to final stand. And then you want a super for here. So I turn around. I'm like, yep. Okay. There's no cover behind me. So I'm going to get my resto going. I threw down the healing nade again. If you were really going for like optimization, you're going to run like a fusion grenade or something you can throw on that boss, maybe a solar grenade, but yeah, something that you can throw on them. So I'm just going to expend the rest of my ammo pretty much. Uh, and then use the super to take them out because that's going to be safest. So there I throw my hammer because it's like we, we're we not doing anything after this now. Shoot my Izzy, shoot my rocket. Hammer to the finish. And yeah, that is the solo flawless. So I hope this guide was helpful. Like I said, I'm sorry I couldn't edit it and like make it all nice and pretty but i hope the insights were helpful because like i said i ran these boss phases over and over again 
So you pick up a lot of little tips and tricks. And like I said, there's just so much agency, so many ways to manage the ads, manage the blights, manage everything and like safely dunk your stuff. But I can't recommend solar enough. Uh, the restoration is just too crucial. Anyways, uh, if you found the video helpful, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Um, sorry it's so long. And yeah, good luck in your solo flawless of the new dungeon. And let me know down in the comments how you like it. Honestly, I think it's right up there with prophecy for me. Obviously, when a new dungeon releases, it's always like new dungeon hype and you love it. But like I said, the replayability right away, I can tell, is already way better than Ghost of the Deep. And I, I like Ghost of the Deep, but I just hate running it. I just wish I could have boss CPs. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Take care.